As Linux administrators, we want the most efficient way we can get to manage our servers. And carrying around a monitor and a keyboard to physically plug into a server anytime we want to do work on it, that's just not a very efficient way to do that, which is why OpenSSH is extremely popular. And in the case of cloud servers, it's basically the only way that you're going to be able to connect to them. I mean, yes, you can usually access web consoles through the dashboard of whatever your cloud hosting provider happens to be, but even that has its drawbacks. OpenSSH is basically the industry standard when it comes to remote management on Linux. Now, as useful as OpenSSH is, it's also a very popular target when it comes to hackers that want to get into your system and just basically cause trouble. So the subject of this video is some things that you can do to harden your server because, you know, OpenSSH is probably not something you're going to disable because it's something you're going to find yourself using anytime you want to remotely manage your server. So it's very important that we do whatever we can to make it as secure as possible. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you some ways that you can harden your cloud Linux server and protect OpenSSH from outside threats. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here on my laptop, I'm currently running Ubuntu. And what I'm going to do is use SSH to connect to a cloud server that I went ahead and set up. Now, quick note, it doesn't necessarily have to be a cloud server. The reason why I say cloud is because that's a very popular use case nowadays. But nothing in this video is going to be specific to any cloud provider. I am using Linode. Yes, they are a sponsor. So if you want a awesome Linux server to get started with, uh, check the link in the description below. But whether you're using Linode or you have a physical server or you're running this on VirtualBox, it really doesn't matter because OpenSSH is configured the same regardless. There is one difference when it comes to cloud providers versus manually installed Linux installations that I'm going to get to very shortly, but I just wanted to point that out. So in my case, what I'm going to do is SSH root at and then the IP address of the server that I want to connect to. And this is the server that I'm going to be hardening and improving the security on. So this Ubuntu at Ubuntu right here, this is the local laptop. So what I'm going to be doing right now is connecting to the remote server. So I'll press enter. I'll put in my super secret password. And we're good to go. So how are we going to secure the system? Now, the first thing we want to do is disable root login. Now, this is one of the differences depending on whether you have a cloud server or if you have you know, a manually installed system. This is an Ubuntu server, so I do want to make sure I mention that. Ubuntu doesn't normally come with a root account, though. That's usually disabled by default. But if you're using a cloud provider, then the root account is generally what you are given to log in. But we don't want to use root unless we absolutely have to. But generally speaking, people try to get in as root because root is the most popular user. But we don't want anyone to log in as root because if they were able to get in as root, well, that's a big problem. And, you know, everyone knows about the root username. So we definitely want to close that down. All right. And to show you what I'm talking about when it comes to the root account, I'm just going to do cat var log auth dot log again. But I'm going to grep for root. And I'm going to scroll up quite a bit here and go past all this. And you'll see some attempts that were made to get into the server. So you can see that there are basically people that are logging in or at least attempting to log in to the server via root. So this is a real problem. And this is what I want to underscore here. As soon as you have a server that's publicly facing like a cloud server, then you're going to have this problem. Now, before we go ahead and disable root login, we need to create a normal user to use. Otherwise, we're just basically going to lock ourselves out. So what I'm going to do is open a new tab right here. 
Let me go ahead and increase the font size a bit, and I'm going to do the same thing, SSH root, and then the IP address. So as you can see, I have two terminal tabs that are both open to the same server. Why did I do that? Well, I'm gonna show you guys that in just a moment. But first of all, we need to create a user for ourselves. Now, if you've installed your Linux distribution manually, then chances are you already have a user that you have created on the system. So if you have a normal username that you're logging in with other than root, you already meet this, the requirements here. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process. So since I'm logged in as root, that I don't need to use sudo, so I could just do add user, and then my name, I'll just put that in there. And I'll go ahead and create a password. And I'll retype it. And I'm just going to go ahead and press enter to bypass all this information here. So now I have a user account. So if I do a cat against Etsy password, you can see my user account was created here at the bottom. So it does exist. But the problem is my user account is not going to be able to use sudo. I'll show you what I mean. So if I switch to that user, so now I'm my own user, I do sudo apt update. I'm going to put in my password. It doesn't work because I'm not a sudoer. We need to make sure that we allow our user to run commands as sudo. Otherwise, we basically are locking ourselves out from being able to use administrative commands on our machine. We don't want that. So I'll do control D to log out. I'm back to root, as you can see by the username here. Now, if your server is running Ubuntu or anything based on Ubuntu and also Debian, then adding your user account to sudo is pretty easy. Basically what you do is user mod dash a uppercase G, the group name is sudo, and then you just simply put in the username that you created and press enter. To test it, do groups and then your username, and you should see sudo is listed there. So now if I do this, su dash, and then my name, I could do sudo apt update, and I could type in the password, and you can see that I'm able to do it. Switch back to root here. Now, if you're not running Ubuntu, you basically need to find out how to add your user to be a sudoer. One way you can do that is by sudo as root. And then if you scroll down a bit, if you see a percentage, that's a group. So here is a user privilege, just showing root. Members of the admin group are allowed and members of the sudo group are allowed. So if you're using a different distribution, Yours might be wheel. So basically you would just want to check that and make sure that your user is a member of whatever group is shown there. And then what you want to do is go ahead and test it. So one easy way to test it, I just gave you the sudo apt update command that doesn't work on all distributions though. But one really easy way to do that is sudo ls slash etsy. The ls command is it going to do any harm? So you can run this command if you're able to run it and you have sudo access. So I'll press enter. And you can see I do because it does show a list of items there. You can also do sudo l. And it's going to show you what you're allowed to do. You can actually give users the rights to do only certain things, but my user has all. It's a member of the sudo group. So it works. So now what we can do is actually disable root access, which will take care of the first item on my list. So to do that, we need to edit a special file, which is actually the file that we're going to be editing for this entire video. All of our changes are going to be made in this file. So if you're not running as root, you can just do sudo nano slash etsy ssh sshd underscore config. And if you're running as root, you don't need sudo. And you can replace nano with whatever text editor you prefer if that's not the one you like. And we have the main SSH config file right here. So we're going to scroll down a little bit. And you can see in this case, permit root login is yes. A lot of times that'll default to no depending on your distribution. 
And it'll also differ based on if you're using a cloud server like me or if you're using a manually installed Ubuntu or Debian installation or whatever distro you're using. But basically what you want to do is just change this to no. We do not want to allow root to log in. So I'm going to do control O to save that and then control X to exit out. Now simply editing that file does not make the changes take effect. So what we want to do is restart the SSH service. Now this is something that's going to differ depending on the distribution you're using. Now Debian and Ubuntu You'll use sudo systemctl restart ssh. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, if you are using CentOS or Fedora, it's probably going to be sshd. A lot of distributions use that. But I did restart ssh, and we can check the status. We can see that it's active and running. Now, notice, though, that when I restarted it, it did not drop my connection. So you could restart the OpenSSH server while you're connected to it. It's not going to drop established connections. But the problem is if you made a mistake or you locked yourself out and then you log out, you might not be able to log in again, which is actually why I have uh, two tabs right here open to the same server. That's important. So what I'm going to do is log out completely. And now on this tab, I am logged in just to my laptop. This is my laptop shell. I'm still logged into the server though in this other tab. So if I made a mistake, I still have this session open to fix it. And I'm going to make sure that it works in this tab right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and recall that command. It's just the up arrow. That's the most recent command I ran locally was just SSH into that instance. Can I still do it? And actually, I shouldn't be able to because we disabled root login. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the password. And it's going to fail just to make sure I did put the password in right. It's not going to let me in. So that's important because we don't want to be allowed into the server as root. So what I can do then is change root to my actual username, the one that I created. I'll put in my password. I am connected to the server and just to make sure everything is working, put in the password and sudo works. So let's go ahead and check the log file then. So if I do sudo, let's just do tail. I'll do like the last hundred lines is probably too many, but it, it works. var log auth dot log. Now right here, it's saying failed password for root. That's a little misleading. It's actually blocking us because we're not allowed to log in as root. It's basically not accepting the password for root because root isn't allowed to sign in. So this is basically what you're going to see when you check the logs. And again, the log file is this one, off.log. And let's go ahead and clear the screen. And now you can see why I have two tabs open here. I left this one open. I made my changes in this tab. I logged out and then I logged in to make sure I still could do that and didn't get locked out. And if I had any problems whatsoever, where let's just say hypothetically I was locked out, that I could simply go over here to this tab and investigate the problem and fix it because you definitely don't want to close out your last remaining SSH session when you're configuring SSH, just a good rule of thumb. But we have successfully disabled root login, which is very important because we don't want to allow anyone to log in as root. So now that we took care of disallowing root login, what's next? We'll get back to the video shortly, but I'd like to take a moment to thank my sponsor, Linode. I definitely recommend you check out Linode. Linode has a special offer for subscribers of Learn Linux TV. If you watch my channel, no doubt you're interested in tinkering with things like computers, Linux servers, and the like. So that's why Linode wants your help testing out their new data center coming to Sydney, Australia by the end of 2019. Sign up to become a beta tester by visiting the link in the description, and you'll be notified by email when the beta opens for testing. 
By joining the beta program, you'll even have the opportunity to be the first to test other Linode products in the future. Be sure to check the I want to be a beta tester box when you sign up. Be sure to check out Linode and let's get back to the video. Basically disabling root access is very important, but we can still log in via password, which is a bigger problem. Now, the thing is you can create a very long password and you really should, specifically a randomly generated password, that's great. But it would be even better if we don't allow passwords at all because people aren't going to be able to brute force your server if we're not even accepting passwords in the first place. So that's what we're going to do next is we're going to disable password authentication. Now, before we do that, though, we do have one thing that we will have to take care of, and that is creating a key. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect control D. And now I am logged in here on my local prompt here. We need to create an SSH key because if we're going to disable password authentication, we have to have another means of logging in. And key-based authentication is definitely more secure than passwords. So we're going to have to get that set up first. Thankfully, all we have to do is SSH hyphen keygen, just like that, and then press enter. It's going to ask us where we want to save the key. If you don't already have a key on your system, this is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and accept the defaults on that. It's asking me for a passphrase, which is essentially a password. But this is not a password that anybody will be prompted for unless they have your key. So we can still disable password authentication even though we're asking for a passphrase. I do recommend doing that. It's better, but it's beyond the scope of the video. I'm just going to press enter for no passphrase. It says enter the same passphrase again. Well, I didn't even enter one to begin with, so I'll just press enter. And there we have the key right here. I'll just clear the screen. If we do an ls against our home directory designated by a tilde in my case, .ssh, you can see we have three files. We have known hosts and we have id underscore rsa and the same file name again but dot pub. Now I'm going to show you the contents of these files. Now I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. The one that just says id underscore rsa or basically the key file that does not end in dot pub, you should never show it to anybody ever for any reason whatsoever. This is your private key that needs to stay here. You absolutely don't want to leak that out to anybody because that invalidates the key. Now, in my case, this is just a demo server, so I'm going to show it to you. But in the real world, you would never do what I'm about to do. But what I'm going to do first is show you the contents of the public key. So again, my home directory and the .ssh folder, which means it's a hidden folder. And there's a public key. I'm going to press enter. And now you see the contents of my public key. And if I do the same thing, but I leave off the .pub, you'll see my private key. Now it says private key right in the file. It's all in caps here in case there's any uh, question about this. You absolutely should not be showing this key to anybody. Now the only reason why I'm showing it to you guys is because I just want to show you what it looks like. In my case, I'm going to be deleting the servers and probably re-imaging this laptop anyway. So it really doesn't matter that you see this key, but I just wanted to give you an example of what that looks like. But the public key is fine to give out. In fact, if you're working on someone's server, they might ask you for your public key to allow you to SSH into the machine. But now that we have the SSH key locally, that doesn't really help us because the server is not really accepting that. So. I'm going to go over here to the actual server. I'm still logged in here and I'm going to change over to my user account and let's just check out the files that we have here. I do not have a .ssh folder as you can see because I have not generated or copied over any keys yet. So there's no .ssh folder there. So what I'm going to do here on my local machine is I'm going to copy that key over to the server. I'm going to do ssh hyphen copy hyphen id and dash i I'm going to do tilde forward slash dot ssh and then I'm going to go ahead and type that in right there 
And I'm going to copy that over to the server, which is my username is J on that server, at, and then the IP address for it, and I'll press Enter. And now it's asking me for my password. We have not disabled password-based authentication yet, so I'll press Enter. It says number of keys added one, and it's telling me try to log in, see what happens. Let's do exactly what it said. SSH, my user, at, and then the IP address. Notice that it logged me in without asking me for the password. That's important because what that means is it used the key that I generated. It didn't ask me for the password. So now I know that it's actually safe for me to disable password authentication on this machine because I just tested that key-based authentication works. If you were to disable password-based authentication and your key authentication doesn't work, you've effectively locked yourself out of your machine. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick, earlier in the video, I mentioned, you know, there was no .ssh folder on this user account. We do have a .ssh folder. So before I talk more about securing SSH, I want to go back to this. So I'm going to go ahead and go into that folder and we have an authorized keys file. So if I do cat against that file, we can see that we have the key. Basically, this is the public key. So if I go to another local session and then just do cat.ssh id.pub, we can see that it's the same key here in this file that's located on the server in the authorized keys file. Now, literally, you could grab your public key. You can edit this file and paste this in there, and it'll still work. You don't have to use the SSH copy ID command like we did. You could actually set it up manually, but why set it up manually if you don't have to? But now you know. So what I'm going to do, I have to use sudo because I'm not root. I'm going to do nano, and again, the same file as before, Etsy, SSH, SSH, D underscore config and then enter, put in my password here. We're back in the SSH config file. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. We see that password authentication is yes. The numeric symbol or hash sign right here means that it's commented out. That's a default value. It's set to yes. We're going to set that to no. and close out of here and then I'm going to go ahead and restart SSH. So press enter. That was quick. And again, it doesn't disrupt current sessions. You see from the status that it's running, so that's great. And then I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. Now remember, I'm still connected over here. That's important. So I'm going to recall that SSH command. And we can see that we are logged into the server. It did not ask for password. We disabled password authentication. And now we are getting into the server via the SSH key that we generated. So to show you what's going to happen when you try to get in and you don't have a key, I'm logged into the server right now, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new user. So sudo add user jdo, enter. And I'll type a new password for our new user and accept the defaults here, just pressing enter. We have a new user. As you can see, we have jdoe user ID 1001, group ID 1001. So now we have that new user. Now notice we did not add an SSH key for that user. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect and I'm back at my local shell, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to change the username to jdoe. I'll press enter. Permission denied. So basically, it didn't even give me a chance to ask for password because password authentication is disabled. But if I was to change the name back to mine, we could see that it works just fine. Now, with those two things that we just did, we basically enhanced the security quite a bit. Now you don't have to do everything on my list of things to do for SSH, but if you do nothing else, the first two things that I gave you are the most important. 
You do not want to allow root login and you also don't want password authentication because if password authentication is allowed, people will try to brute force it. They will try all kinds of scripts and things to get into your server. But if you disallow password authentication altogether, they're not able to do that. But what else can we do to harden the server a little bit further? Now, one thing we can do is change the port that SSH listens on. By default, it's listening for connections via port 22. That's the default open SSH port. We can change that to a different number. But that isn't really going to help security very much because if somebody runs a port scan against your server, they're still going to find your SSH server and the port that it's listening on. But again, it's a very easy thing to do. You may as well do it, but is there any benefit? Well, again, not much, but what it will do is stop automatic or automated scans that are looking specifically for SSH servers listening on 22. If the script hits your server, it's going to say, well, I guess there's no SSH server here, and then it's going to move on to the next server. So let's go ahead and change the SSH port. All right, so back here on the server, again, I'm connected to my Linode instance right here. We're going to go ahead and change the port. So again, we're going to do sudo nano slash etsy ssh sshd underscore config. Press enter. And here we are yet again in the file that we've been editing. And what we want to change is actually right here at the top. Now we can change the port. Now what number you change it to, it basically doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and change mine to 2099, like the uh, 2099 series of Marvel Comics back in the day. I don't know. You can come up with your own number. But I guess that's the one that I'm going to go with here. And I'm going to go ahead and save the file. That's the only change that I needed to make. So it's Control O to save it. Control X to exit out. And if real quick, we could do sudo netstat dash tulpn. And let's grep for SSH. And right away, we see SSH is listening on port 22. Even though we changed it in the file, we didn't restart it. So those new changes have not taken effect just yet. Now the reason I used sudo with the netstat command is because you're not going to get the name. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize the font size here a little bit. And that'll make it show up better. So you can see at the end here, it's giving us the process name. Now if I do netstat-tulpn just like that, you can see that it's not giving us that information, which is the only reason why I did that. But basically, when I ran that command and grepped for SSH, it just narrowed the output to just those ports. And we can see that it's running on port 22. So now what I can do is sudo systemctl. We're just going to restart it again. And then we're going to recall the netstat command. We can see now that it's listening on port 2099, just like I changed it in the config file. And just in case I made a mistake, I am still connected here. So I could do sudo nano slash etsy ssh sshd again, just like before. I can go into this file. I can correct the, the change if I made a mistake and restart it again so I don't get locked out, just like always but it looks like we did everything right, but let's just go ahead and test it to be sure. I'm gonna drop from my server connection. Now at my local instance, I'm gonna to try to SSH into the server again. Connection refused. Why? Well, if you don't designate a port, it's gonna use port 22, but we changed it. It's no longer port 22. So of course the connection is refused, because, well, I mean, it's not listening on that port. So we need to be able to designate the port that we need to connect to for SSH. So how do we do that? Well, we actually add a new option, dash P. And what we want to do is add the port number here. So this is what the command looks like. I added the dash P option right here and then the port number. And this is the username and the IP address just like before. So let's give that a shot. And there you go. I was able to log into the server via that port. And all I did 
was just add again the dash p option with 2099. Now one important thing to mention here is that if you're using SCP, SCP is a command that I went over in a previous video on my channel, which basically allows you to transfer a file to your server via SSH. You use the SCP command for that. You could check out that video if you're curious, but basically with SCP, you just basically add the dash capital P option here, and it's the same thing. So you just add that to whatever command syntax you're using if you already use that command. Again, check the video if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'll have a card or something around this time in the video you can click on. But for those of you out there that use SCP, you have to designate an uppercase P because a lowercase P is reserved. That's actually an option uh, that means something else. So you basically need the dash uppercase P for that. But if you're using SSH, which is the discussion topic of this video, you're going to use a dash P. It's going to be lowercase P. You're going to designate whatever port number you changed it to. And then that's how you're going to get into the server from now on. So if someone tries to get into my server via port 22, they're not going to be able to do that. All right, so connecting back to the server. I'm logged in, and how can we further harden the server? Well, there's a new option that we can actually add to the config file. So I'm gonna, let's go ahead and edit the config file yet again. So now that we're in the file, what we're going to do is we're going to add a new option that's most likely not in the file already, but just to be safe. Control W allows you to basically search. Allow users. That's the one that we want to add, but I'm gonna search for it. Again, that was Control W and Nano. Press Enter. We can see that it's not found. So it really doesn't matter where you put this. I generally tend to put any options that I add or customize you know, basically around the port number closer to the top. That's not required, but it's just a personal habit of mine. But I'm gonna go ahead and allow users, and I'm gonna go ahead and allow myself. Now I'll do Control O, and then Control X to save, and let's restart it. And then I'll drop out. And let's go ahead and sign in. Now you shouldn't notice anything different because I essentially just added the same username that I've been using, which we already know it's been working. Scrolling down here to allow users. Again, I just added my username, which works because that's been working. But what happens if it's an invalid user, you know, somebody that's not allowed? Now, you probably shouldn't try what I'm about to show you because you could lock yourself out. But I do want to show you what it looks like when a user tries to basically connect via SSH and they're not an allow user. Now you can basically add additional users by typing a space and then the username. So I can add both myself and that new user that we created. The new user isn't going to be able to log in anyway. But what I am going to do though is remove my user account from the server and effectively lock myself out. Bad idea, don't do this, but I am because why not? I'm gonna go ahead and restart SSH. And then checking the status, make sure that everything is okay. It is. So let's get out of here and log out. So now I'm on my local instance. I'm gonna go ahead and try to log in as my user account. Permission denied public key. Well, that's weird because the public key was working fine and I didn't change it. So what's up with that? Well, I still have this connection open over here to that server. So let's go ahead and investigate. So I'm going to do sudo cat slash var log auth dot log. Press enter. We see connection closed by invalid user J. We can see that a couple of times here because I tried several times to get in. I wasn't able to do that. And here you can see that I was basically denied and why I was denied. And it tells you right here that the user account that tried to get in is an invalid user. 
So somebody from the outside is trying to get into your server even after all of this, you'll see similar messages like this. But we do need to get this fixed because if this shell session here was to die, then I've effectively locked myself out of the server. We don't want to do that. So let's quickly bring up that file and fix it. I'm going to change allow users to the correct username. I'm going to save it and let's restart it. And this is what happens if you're using a regular user and you forgot to type sudo at the beginning, but that's okay. I'll just type the password in and there we go. So now on my local session, I should be able to connect to the server now. And I am, I was able to get back in. But for the purposes of our video, those are my top changes that I recommend everybody make to OpenSSH to get that secure. Because again, that's a very popular attack vector for people that want to get into your server and cause trouble. You definitely want to disable root login, disable password authentication, and only use SSH keys, preferably with a passphrase. Even though we didn't do that in this video, a passphrase is just something it's going to ask you for to unlock the key. Um, that's always important, but basically as long as you especially don't allow root login and password-based authentication in general, you should be fine for you know from most attacks. And if someone still tries to get in, I mean, they're really determined, then you might have a bigger problem that you might want to look into. Now, there is one last thing I'll mention. And how you do this kind of depends on what platform you're on. And I can't really go over all of them in this video. But basically, you can restrict your access to SSH to just your IP address. So if you go to whatismyipaddress.com or something like that, you look at your IP address. You can actually go into the firewall of your cloud provider and in there you can actually restrict SSH connections specifically just to your IP, which is a great way to secure open SSH. But again, depending on who your provider is, that process is going to differ, but I highly recommend you do that. One downside of doing that though is if you're like me and you have residential internet, then basically your IP address can change at any time. So if ever you can't connect, you're going to have to go to the dashboard to your VM or cloud provider and update that IP address. You're going to find yourself doing that every now and then unless you're lucky and you have a static IP, in which case that really doesn't matter. But if you are able to do that, I highly recommend you do because that combined with everything else I mentioned in this video pretty much takes care of the majority of your security needs when it comes to OpenSSH. So what do you think about this video? Was that helpful? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.